This is the further end time adventures of Verb McCracken. Who is Verb McCracken? Well, he's an itinerant preacher during the tribulation time, which is future from now. We're not in the tribulation yet. We could be soon. <laughs> After the rapture of the church, when it disappears. So he was an itinerant preacher during that time. He lost his wife in the tribulation, and then he preached at seven churches during that seven-year period called the tribulation. He preached in Ephesus that we've already covered, Smyrna we've already covered, Pergamum, we've already covered, and Thyatira. So now that's where we are in Thyatira. And you can read the blog, spiritualrants.com. By the way, you could also get commentary for every day if you're reading through the one year Bible. It'll be a commentary of everything in the Bible if you go to that blog, spiritualrants.com. And yet I digress. So we get back to the seven churches from Revelation chapter 2 and 3. And now we're in Thyatira part 2. So if you missed... Part one, you need to go back and get an understanding of what's going on in this church. So, here we pick up the story. I could see her going down the front stairs to the church and making the curly cue around her ear. Not the older lady with the crotchety nose, but one of her friends. She was making the crazy motion to indicate I was nuts. (laughs) The whole congregation knew that I did first-person sermons. A first-person sermon was when I portrayed someone from Scripture, sometimes even in costume. I just announced from the pulpit that we were going to have a guest speaker the next week. Of course, everyone in the church knew what I meant. The guest speaker was going to be me, and I might even dress up in costume. But the lady who did the curly cue was excited because, though she was in Florida half the year, she particularly relished the few Sundays she was in our church and especially enjoyed church when I wasn't there. So when she heard the term guest speaker, she was excited. When she greeted me at the door after the service, she asked me who the guest speaker was going to be the next week. Of course, I was a little confused because I knew it was going to be me. Then I figured it out. She wasn't in on the joke, so I had to explain to her about a first-person sermon. Thus, after traversing the 13 stairs down to the ground, she turned to her good friend, the lady with the crotchety nose, and made the loopity loop around her ear. She was indicating, I must be crazy. I called down the stairs to her. I saw that. (laughs) I knew they were planning a party for me. I could see two of the deacons talking in their car in the parking lot as I said goodbye to everyone else after the services. A few years after I had gotten to the church, I had enforced membership. I knew it was a novelty for the church, but it had to be done. Anyone in the community could show up at one of our business meetings and vote. No kidding. Anyone could show up and vote. After all, it was a community church. 
But I didn't think it was biblical, and certainly it violated the idea of having everything done with order. So the element that wanted to get rid of me knew they would have to shake the trees to rouse people who hadn't come to church in ages, but were members. Imagine my surprise when I walked in to the next business meeting and I saw so many people I hadn't even met. They were members. But they hadn't attended since the eight years I was pastor. They took a vote on me as pastor. I had won by one solitary vote. At that point, the husband of the curly Q lady spoke up. He addressed me directly. Pastor, I think you know what is going on here. He meant that I should resign since the vote was so close. I said to him, I did know. I know that you have contacted a lot of the people that are members but haven't attended here in a long time. I don't know what lies you told them, but whatever you told them, they have now showed up to vote me out. The husband of the curly Q lady tried to speak out again. The treasurer interrupted him and stopped him. The vote stands. <laughs> the next vote on the agenda that day concerned the largest salary increase I had ever gotten. I had been paid a pittance for years since I was told the church was just filled with poor people. Years later, I found out that many of them were millionaires. All of the new congregants stayed for the vote. All but four people voted for my 60% raise. It was short-lived, though. <laughs> the next year, I had six bypasses. And the year after that, there was another business meeting. It was an illegal meeting. The meeting was called during one of my two vacation weeks. They thought I'd be away from the pulpit. The meeting wasn't led by the moderator. It was not even led by the next year's moderator. It was actually led by a newly installed deacon, a policeman, from the nearby city. I caught wind of the meeting, so I surprised them and showed up. But I was too weak to fight. Some of the newest members have been roused up and told a lot of lies about me. I was just too weak to fight. I answered a couple of the charges against me and called out the policeman who hadn't returned my phone calls for months and then made my statement. My closest friends, the secretary of the church and the moderator of the church, had not been invited. However, I addressed each person in the room who had sat in a circle. I singled each one out and told a positive anecdote about them that had stuck in my mind. One was about how I had had a wonderful dinner at their house. One was about the good time we had taken a deacon to a pro football game. Another was how a great family had taught our children. Then I resigned. They didn't fire me. They just promised to help me start a church closer to my house. They paid me some money, coincidentally the same amount as if they had fired me. No other support for that new church was forthcoming. And yet, I returned to preach during the tribulation. To be continued. If you'd like more information on what the scripture says about having orderly services, look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40. All things should be done properly and in an orderly manner. This is Jerry Rothhauser for SpiritualRants.com in the further end time adventures of Verb McCracken.
I hope next week you'll be reading your Bible every day and checking out spiritualrants.com for commentary. You can also follow Verb McCracken on the Spiritual Rants podcast on iTunes, Libsyn, Google Play, and YouTube. And as always, I hope you'll be downloading.